Hi everyone. Today in this video, we would like to talk about the resultant bar magnetic movement of two bar magnets that are in contact in different possible ways. Right? So to remind you once again, what's a magnetic moment is, it was done many times earlier, but I'm telling you again, magnetic moment is the product of pole strength of the bar magnet with the length of the magnet. Pole strength is a scalar. Magnetic length is a vector whose direction is from south to north inside a bar magnet, right? Taking that basics into consideration, let us put two bar magnets in contact. This is one bar magnet with its south pole here, north pole here. Each of pole strength AM is in contact with another bar magnet in one possible way, that is south pole in contact with the south pole itself. They two are having an angle theta between them. What is the resultant magnetic moment is the kind of a question that can be asked. Then this magnetic length is from south to north. So the magnetic moment is also from south to north. So this is the magnetic moment of the first bar magnet. Let me call it like M1. This is the mag south to north again. Magnetic moment of the second bar magnet M2. They are having an angle theta and these two are the vectors. You know what happens when there is a vectors? Resultant magnetic moment using parallelogram law of vectors can be written like root of M1 square plus M2 square plus 2M1 M2 cos theta. That is the resultant of two vectors using the parallelogram law of vectors that we have learned in first year. This is the answer for this problem. So if somebody want to just extend this question, what if, if two bar magnets are identical, M1 equal to M2 equal to M, what happens then? Let's write the equation. M resultant will be root of, equate both of them, M square plus M square plus 2MM cos theta. Let us simplify this. Square root of m and m is 2m square. This is another 2m square cos theta. I can take 2m square common in these two terms. That becomes 1 plus cos theta. You know, in trigonometry, 1 plus cos theta is 2 cos square theta by 2. So that is all together under the square root of 4m square cos square theta by 2. So the answer is out of 4, 2 will come. Out of m square, m will come from square root. Out of cos square theta, cos theta by 2 will come. That's the m resultant of two vectors, right? So what if, if somebody say these two vectors are perpendicular to each other? These two magnets are perpendicular to each other like this. South pole, north pole. Similar poles in contact. Then this is the direction of magnetic moment EM. This is the direction of another. This is the similar poles are in contact as I said earlier. So let me do the same. Yeah. So north pole is in contact. So this is the direction of another magnet. These two are having an angle 90 degree between them. If the angle is 90, what happens to M resultant? 2M cos 90 by 2. That is 2M cos 45. Cos 45 is 1 by root 2. So that for, that's value is a M by root 2. So the resultant of these two vectors somewhere lies here. It's a value of M resultant whose value is a M by root 2. As M1 and M2 are equal, resultant will be exactly in between them. So we are simply solving it like vectors. Now let's switch over slightly and deal it in a different way. That is, what if, if these two magnets are in contact with not similar poles, but dissimilar poles, that is, North Pole and South Pole is in contact. What happens then? Let's try to understand. Yeah. So, the case that we are talking about now is South Pole is in contact with, North Pole is in contact with South Pole of the other magnet. So, this is M1 from South to North. 
this is m2 again from south to north angle between them is theta you might have noticed that these two vectors are new in the same direction but they are in a different direction because opposite poles are in contact i can again apply the parallelogram law and find out resultant what is m resultant is is in parallelogram law m1 square plus i will write minus m2 because the second vector is in opposite direction 2m1 minus m2 cos theta i have just written minus m2 because this is in a different direction that is m1 square minus m2 whole square is m2 square itself this will become a minus itself because there is a minus minus 2m1 m2 cos theta you might have noticed the difference earlier here you have a plus now we have a minus what if again if two vectors are equal if m1 equal to m2 what happens to m resultant yeah root of m square plus m square minus 2m earlier it is plus 2mm cos theta now it is minus 2mm cos theta so i can take m square and m square 2m square common here also 2m square 1 minus cos theta again you have a formula in trigonometry 1 minus cos theta is 2 sin square theta by 2 so out of so all together 4 m square sin square theta by 2 so its value is 2 m sin theta by 2 so i want you to observe a little carefully here you got 2 m sin theta by 2 whereas in the earlier case you got 2 m cos theta by 2 so if identical poles are in contact resultant is 2 m cos theta by 2 if non identical poles dissimilar poles are in dissimilar poles are in contact it is 2 m sin theta by 2 this is how we can find out the resultant of two vectors with different angles even however they are in contact we can identify their directions we can use parallelogram law and we can find the resultant magnitude as well as the direction that's with the two vectors resultant magnetic moment thank you for watching